The following podcast is sponsored by Words and Pictures Comics, located at 2610 Center Street, number 6. Words and Pictures is your one-stop shop for vintage back issues and cutting-edge graphic novels. Awesome service, great shop, check them out. Welcome, everyone, to episode 250 of Just Joshing. I am your host, Joshua Pendelaresco. I write stuff and podcast, too. Today, I have a very special guest. Um, Alice Zero is going to be up for pre-order for sure, for sure, for sure. First week of May. May 1st. By May 1st, I'm putting it into the Amazon database. And whenever that goes through, I will actually have an order link for people to order the book. It's done. And um, what does that do with my guests? You might ask, well, my guest is the illustrator of the book, Kent Mackenzie Carr. Um, I got a lot to talk about in the post. This is going to go, both the front and back are going to go a little long this time. But I just kind of wanted to say this. Um, I was really fortunate to meet her. Um, I met her about four, three years ago. We were playing Magic and, and just met. was playing against her boyfriend. And uh, we just had a quick conversation, and and I told her about my books, and she actually saw one and was really impressed. And about, I think it was September, October, um, I got to see some of her drawings. I didn't realize how good she was. She was incredibly talented. And I told her so. I wasn't planning. I was thinking, thinking about getting illustrations done for Alice Zero, and, and it, it's been done like in terms of the written stuff for a while. And I found... To my surprise, we just talked ourselves into working together. And she killed it. She unbelievably killed it. Um, I was really surprised with um, the quality of the work I got. And I was really fortunate to work with her. And I figured this conversation should just introduce her to the world. Mackenzie Carr is an amazing artist. And you guys should definitely check her work out. Let's just get to the conversation, shall we? Right. So is, is the sound here going to be okay? It should, it should be. It should be. I I, I, fig- I went over here because over there it was really loud. Yeah. It was like and now this is what's going to happen. We're going to get talking. This will yeah. be really. This will be kind of like halfway. It's like yeah, work through this, and then by the time we're nearly done, everybody will be gone. That's how the universe <laughs> works. No, perfect. Yes, that's how the universe works. <laughs> so I always ask if you have anything from anything you'd like to say, make it good. Make it good. Make it good. Uh, I guess the only thing I can think of is I I once almost or not it really almost, but I. Actually accidentally stole a hat one time from a store because we were walking around and we were playing with the hats and checking them out and we were interested in buying one but then decided not to but I still have one on my head and we were walking around and totally forgot about it it had the tag hanging down we bought our food bought our stuff the people at the counter looked at us didn't see it didn't tell me about it we walked out and we were driving home and then we realized (laughs) so that's about it How you got a hat? It was meant to go home, one way yeah, or the other. Apparently. Yes. Yeah. It was a nice hat, I guess. That was a nice. Hat. Do you still have it? I do. It was a cheap, like a dollar hat, so I felt like it wasn't worth driving all the way back. But and yeah, it was awkward. <laughs> That's ironic as hell, actually. It's hilarious. Right. <laughs> yeah. So hell yes. So I think I met you when you your boyfriend was playing magic yeah. if i'm not mistaken yep yes yeah, yep. so we're both playing, but he was way more into it and way better at it than i was is, yes is, are you guys still playing it at this point he is yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, he's gone more online because it's expensive to keep buying the cards absolutely yeah oh god yeah I, i've actually put, for me i'm just i just play commander at this point oh yeah well, that's all right i don't think i've ever actually played commander i don't know the rules exactly oh, okay so the way it works is you get a legend so a legendary creature whatever it is is your commander Okay. And it's in its own special zone. You can play it anytime you can cast it. Your deck is composed of colorless or the colors of your commander. So if it's a one color, so so let's say your commander is blue white, your cards are blue and white and only blue white. Okay. Or with are, are with the caveat of effects. And each deck, each card, going out one of. Oh, all right. So. Yeah. Each card meaning like um, uh, about the time basic. have a, a bunch of the same like um that's the word I'm looking for. The the main guys. It's, yes. it's like the same as the commander though. The, like, the, cre- the creatures? Not the creature, but it's uh, the ones that are special, the ones that kind of like you put them down in the Oh no, yeah, like, it, yeah, everything has the legend rule, kind of, right? Yeah. Except oh, okay. except for basic land. You got base all basic lands you want, but everything else is just 
Just one of each type. Right, be, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's... Interesting, that would be a lot more challenging. It, it isn't, it isn't. I mean, some cars are stronger in that format because, like, Soul Ring's good. Like, Soul Ring's always good. Yeah. But now Soul Ring's really good, right? <laughs> the only, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah right, right. And so there is that aspect to it. And, and there are decks that are really, like, powered. Like, I built it. I built a... Uh, I have a three-color deck that's all about morph. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> Because because I I'm at that point like I've done the infinite mana combo like we do those they're nice they're cool yeah. but then you realize you're just playing solitaire and it's no fun. Oh really? <laughs> well no because like, infinite, uh, like I thought that the infinite mana was just like you have one card that every time you put down say like a creature you add on to your life. There, there's right? lot there's there's lot there's lots of ways that, there's there's lots of oh com- mana sorry that's yeah. cool. okay that's where you're like stacking the mana. Like, yeah 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 I don't like I don't want to do that anymore I'll yeah. play I'll play. I'll play my. I'll flip my morph creatures. You can guess what they are. And I can have fun that way, and then we can interact with the board. I would rather do that than. Hey, listen! I make you draw a billion cards <laughs> right now. For sure. I, I, I've done. I've done that, right? So yeah. that's 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 where I'm at. So that's where I'm at in the game. Is just I'm 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 at I'm at that. I'm casual and I'm cool with being casual. That's fair. Yes. Yeah. And it sounds like that's about where you are with the game. Well, I I enjoyed playing, but I'm very bad at strategy games. Like I'm bad at chess. I'm bad at um, you know, Portal. You know how you can play different stages of it. So yes. it was great until you were trying to conquer the other cities, and then I, I just was terrible. I couldn't get past that part, and it's a simple game. <laughs> so that yep. kind of strategy game I'm terrible at. Simplicity is actually very complex. Like, you know, one of my one of my favorite games of all time is Tetris. It's as simple as, it, yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as, if it, well, it's just, it's simple, right? You yeah. just put in blocks, but it's you get to like levels 20, 30, 40. Oh, yeah. It's not, not, not so simple anymore. It gets nope. very, you have to be very quick with your decisions. And you screw up even a little bit, it just quickly cascades out of control. For sure. But that game has been around since like when I was a kid. Yeah. So, and it, it, it works because it's so, like the best games are the simplest ones. Yeah. I think. I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, like, it, especially when you're you're playing like the, the older games like Pac-Man, they're they're simple, but they're very nightmarishly hard as you go along. But yes. then you've got the newer ones that they they're it's more complex. It's more complex, but it's not harder. Like they they've made it possible to finish all the games, like the ones on Xbox. Like you've got the. I I, I actually look for Nintendo what like, what these yeah. called Nintendo hard games now because so back in the when the Nintendo first came out, there are some stupidly hard games from yeah. like the original Nintendo, right? Mm-hmm. They do still make games that hard. Really? Yeah, they do. But they're not that they're not that common. You have to actually find, look for them. Like um, for the PS3, Ninja Gaiden Sigma. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 the, it's the newest take on Ninja Gaiden, which was originally an 80s game. So the first time you play it, you just die from nowhere. <laughs> they just like you don't see it coming. There's no there's no like all of a sudden you know you see a shirt can hit it in your character from like nowhere, like dead. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell is this? But it's actually hard. Or uh, Devil May Cry 3 for the Super, for not for Super PS2 was a super hard game. So hard, it was also a douchey game. Why? Because <laughs> it, you play normal, you die three times, and then you unlock easy. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so mean. <laughs> yes, it is. It's like, oh, you can't handle, you can't handle normal. Because that was one of the few exceptions where the game was actually harder over here than it was in Japan. Really? Yes. <laughs> the original. The special edition is is easier. Because but the, you started easy. Oh well, well, no, it just they made they they downed the difficulties. Like normal the normal level was the Japanese hard. What? Yeah. Yeah, they did they, 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 <laughs> Capcom decided to be really evil in that game. <laughs> right, but but that's so those games do still exist, but by and large I I know this when I play a bit like unless I'm playing like an RPG style video game. Yeah. Right? I'm not, I'm gonna beat the game in like three hours. Yeah, it's it's hard sometimes, but not that hard. And yeah, the yeah. RPGs it's just mostly the amount that you can do, right? Like there's yeah. just so many side quests and so many extra things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that, that and that can be fun. Like I do like I love the one thing I do like about today's games. Is the stories are a lot more interactive and immersive, and they're a lot more fun that way. So it's a cool experience. But they don't have the replayability of the older games. Like yeah. I okay, like this is how old school I am. I love Double Dragon. 
I love. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's still a fun game, even to this day. Even though the, I think the, I've only played it once. <laughs> yes. Well, I used to, I used to, I had a strategy to level up my character really quick. The first, like, level, like, the first two levels, I would just use punches. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> because you, you, would, you would level up, you'd get to, like, my favorite move in the game, which is when you, when you kick them, you actually need them and throw them all over the place. I'm a violent, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a violent guy, what can I say? But, um, but, uh, that, like the game is so simple. It's eight bit. Like it's literally eight bits on the screen. It's not a thing like, like it's not like um, today. It, it, it would be for most people a joke. To look at a game like that, but it's so simple. It's so inter. I, I can play that game again and again and again and again. Whereas if I'm looking at, I like me some Final Fantasy 13. Yeah. I'm probably like, right, but I I can't play that again and again and again. And again. Yeah. Well, it's so long. Like yeah. I, I loved that game too, but yeah. we, we we me and my boyfriend tend to be kind of completionists. So when we play a game, we want to play all of it, get all of the the trophies and things. Yeah. So you can't you can do that over and over again. No. Once you get all the trophies, you're done. Yeah. So, right. Mm-hmm. The only uh the only 13 game that's kind of replayable is Lightning Returns, and that even gets it's, they made three of them okay. and they all tie together the third one is the conclusion to the whole saga everything gets tied together it's one of the most audacious games I've ever played oh, in my really? life I, you I can't eat yeah so basically the world's about to end in, in, in like 12 days right and you're playing lightning and you have a clock every day you're actually playing the game and the, in the day the day just goes by fast so there's a lot of pressure early on in that game to get things done. Now, if you do it right, if you can do this, if you do it right, by the time you get to like day eight, day nine, day 10, you're bored, you got nothing to do. Seriously? Yeah, because if you do it right, because the whole, that game's completely built on side quests, you can do the game in any any order, but once you beat the big levels, you extend your days, right? Uh, Okay. Yeah, that's how it works. So you only have when the game starts, you only have six days to do everything. But after you beat it and enough stuff, then you get seventh day and eighth day until you get to all the days, right? Are you, are you trying to prevent the end of the world, or are you just trying to get everything done you before tr- it ends? You, you know, it's going to end. You're trying to save as many people as you can, and it, and it also ties up a lot of the threads in Final Fantasy 13, 13 2. Like it ties all that stuff up, right? In, in really cool ways. And the last boss in the game is audacious as hell. Like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I won't spoil it. If you if you like the 13, so 13 2 will piss you off. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah it will piss you off. The, it's a good game, but the ending will piss you off. Uh, three, uh, lightning. It's kind of like it's the it's the ending they should have done with two. Like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> At least they did it eventually. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So when did you start drawing? I have been drawing since I was really little. Like I. I probably about six, five, six. Um, my dad was really into drawing, and um, I would always ask him to draw me things, and then one day he just said, you know what, you have to learn to draw yourself, because you're constantly asking me for these things, and I know you like it, so just draw yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I was really into Pokemon back then, and so and kind of still am, and so I, I learned to draw by just tracing, and so I traced all the Pokemon, and then I decided to try to create my own little Pokemon with my sister, and then we got into more like drawing animals and more realistic, and it just kind of developed over time mm-hmm. um, so I'm mostly self-taught like my dad did give me a bunch of uh, advice on how to draw and my mom helped me out because she draws a little bit but um, the closest thing to a school I've ever gone to was this correspondence art course that they, we had from the states they just send us a book we draw and they send it back but that was pretty pretty nice. Um, but most of it I just get from YouTube or books. Or you, you, just you, you, to YouTube University, out. yes. Oh yes, it's so much better. <laughs> I actually I'm using it right now for GIMP because right. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, oh. yeah, really? Yeah, because um, so. Wait, let's, uh, it's no secret, guys. She uh, did the, all the drawings for Alice Zero. I would love to have her for Alice One. We'll see if that works out or not. Yeah. But um, yeah, so your cover, right? The, yeah. I love the picture. So now I got to put the words to it. And I and I was debating about how to do it. So the idea I had actually was since it's Alice Zero, I take your so I'd have your your full picture as the interior, and I have a piece of it like a zero. So Alice herself would look at would look at, it, and then it'd be Alice okay. Zero. And then my name on well, my name, then yours. Oh, cool. Okay. That's it. Yeah, that's how that's how that's how I was thinking about doing it. But I've never used GIMP before. I thought it would be a lot like <laughs> I thought it is a lot like Photoshop, but I have to. It's practice, right? I don't. I, the buttons I, are kind of different. I've never used GIMP either. Yeah, I've heard yeah, of it though. Yeah, it, it, they are a little different. It's still it's still very Photoshop y like. So I'm not. I'm. It's just with my schedule has been for the last few weeks, the months. Yeah. I haven't had time to really just sit there and go, okay. 
But I do have time this weekend, so I'm going to actually okay, do cool. it. I'm actually going to do it this weekend because I want to get this done. And when we do, when we get off the air, I'm going to have to tell you how to actually send you your copies of the book <laughs> because yeah, because yeah. <laughs> we're going to we're going to have to figure that we're going to have to figure that out. Yeah, but, for sure. But but yeah, so. I was really pleasantly surprised. Like I saw some of your drawings, and I did this. So it's very the stuff I usually do is very different than the stuff that we were doing for the book. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Just something just told me you'd be good at that. I don't know. So so why did you take so why did you take up the challenge? I I really like Alice in Wonderland. It's one of those books that I just grew up reading and, and seeing like the cartoons and things. I just I really like it. Cause it's really fantasy. I especially love the Treasure Cat, like most people do. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I just I really like that. And I reading your your story, it also got into Greek mythology, which me and my sister were also really really interested when we were younger. I don't remember why. It just kind of yeah picked it up one time. It feels kind of like a, a basic nerd kind of thing to be into, but we were really into it. So yeah. we just piqued my interest there and the fact that it was kind of surreal looking like you didn't want like an actual she's standing there and everything is realistic but you wanted it to kind of be almost dreamlike right yeah it's, it's, it's well yeah like the the big uber plot which i'm not going to spoil here <laughs> um there is there's a, a lot more of this is analysis head than she realizes mm-hmm. right um, that all said, there's something very real about this too, and I really, I really like the connection, and and it was just a really neat idea. Well, I, I don't know if I told you how I actually came up with this. Um, Did I tell you? I know we were talking about the story itself, but I don't remember if you actually told me how you. Came I, I was, I was requested to do it. What? Yes. <laughs> well, something like it. So uh, Colleen Anderson is an editor, and she does poetry, and she goes, and, and I did a series of, of yeah. epic poems for Mirror World. Yeah. And uh, she goes to me, I'd love you to do something for Lewis Carroll. So I'm like, what the hell can I say about Lewis Carroll that has not been said, right? <laughs> so then I go up, I said, yes, it's an editor and you're, you're going to take, take those opportunities as you as you do. And then uh, I go to a, bar, I do a bar and I see this girl with a Gorgon tattoo on her shoulder. Really? Yes. <laughs> We're still friends to this day, actually. Really? Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, I was like, yeah, I could, I could, I could figure out a way. I think Medusa could fit in Alice, and then that's when the Greek idea came in my head. It's like, oh my god, I now know what I'm doing. Because <laughs> no one's ever done something like this before, but it really fits. It's and, just nice when it flows like that, eh? Yeah. No, no, it, it's well. It's, I think creativity is simply a matter of opening yourself to the public, like just. If, imagination sounds like a very, very underscored thing in creativity, mm-hmm. but you really need imagination to see. And if you're trying to do something that's different, it's really hard. You gotta really look outside the, True. no pun intended, the box. <laughs> uh, so, of the three, what was your favorite one to draw? The, the cat one. I, yeah. I like it because it, it turned out, it was a lot easier than the others because there was only a few objects yeah. in there. Yeah. But I like the cat because it was mostly kind of an accident when I was drawing it. Like, I was I was trying to draw, draw it a certain way and it didn't quite work out as I blended it. And then I realized it looked way better when I blended it that way. And so I just kept going with it. Yeah, and not that. It was so much easier. Yeah, it was yeah. so nice. No, it looked good. And you're like, how do we connect them? The feet, the feet, the feet. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only problem I had. Yes. <laughs> oh no, that's my favorite one. No, you you were you were surprised. You were very fun to collaborate with, actually. Yeah. yeah. You were so like I was kind of worried that I would draw something I liked and then it wouldn't be at all what you were imagining, but it seemed to be pretty close. Oh, well, I think. well it, it's also you're bringing your own spin to the table, right? Mm-hmm. If I just go completely my way, you'll do it, but you'll hate it. Yeah, probably. Right, but you no, know, I mean, that's that just, I mean, so I have friends that do comics, and some of them do them professionally for a living, and I have, I've heard horror stories about writers giving them, one writer in particular I know is notorious for giving, so imagine getting a full comic strip, and you're getting paid 15, 16, 17, and told to draw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, then the next three, the next three are four, five, six. So that one's the harder then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's you, back, right? What? Like, like in the, the order. Yeah, 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 that's the order you're given. So yeah. you'll do it, but you won't be able to contribute any, because you won't know what the story's about. You're like, yeah. I got three pages. I, I, how do I do with this, right? Now, if I give you, now, flip side, let's say I gave you a full comic strip, or let's say I gave you half. Let's say I gave you the first 12. Yeah. You'd have your, I mean, you may not know exactly exactly where the story is going. So you might not be able to give me every good idea you have, but you'd give me something. You'd be like, what do you, what do you think about this, this, and this? And I'd be like, 
this works, this is what happens here, so no, and there'd be, there'd be a collaboration, yeah. and you'd feel involved, right? For sure. Right? You have, like, like a lot of people don't get, illustrators have their own ideas, mm-hmm. and some of them, again, we're not always going to agree, I think the only thing I made you edit was you can't have the sword there. I think yeah, was the only... I, I, I remember, like, I wrote, I drew that, yeah. and I, I was, for some reason, mixing up, I'm not going to say what it is, I was mixing things together in my mind, and, and so I forgot what she looked like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, it was just that like, was that, it was like, yeah, that's the only edit I had to do, it's like, she can't have the sword there. Yeah. She just can't, yeah. <laughs> That was my mistake. It wasn't too hard to take no, no, that off. No, no, but I mean, that that's, again, that's the kind of thing you don't have a problem with. It fits yeah. the vision of the story, right? Yeah, exactly. Right? But you have your own ideas, you have your own thoughts, your own imagination. And when you collaborate with somebody, it should be a little bit of you. It should be a little bit of me. And that's... <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. right, and, and also the fact is that, you know, because of the board game aspect of this I'm working on down the road, I mean, it'll start on some levels with your vision of it. Yeah? Which is, yeah, isn't that cool? Oh, yes. Yes. You are a very nice writer to work with, I must say, like, you're not picky, you're pretty calm, you're you're very open to new ideas, I really like that about you. <laughs> yeah, well, so, like, like, you, have you dealt with, like, really, really, really? Uh, eccentric I've, individuals? I haven't personally dealt with them. My sister does some writing, but I've dealt with some people that if if I had to work with them, I know it wouldn't be great. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well, they, so so this is my this is my suggestion because mm-hmm. you, you, you might find yourself in this situation down the road. Because I, I don't know what your plans are with your art, but assuming you keep going with it, I hope you do on some level because you are really good, right? There's a resentment meter, right? Now, in front of my head, this is a great idea. How much would it cost for you to not resent working with this individual? Oh. You like that? You like that? Yeah, yeah you like that? And you figure out what that amount... At, so what you do is, right, so you put it in your head. This much. If you still feel out of the feeling, you, can, you raise it. And when you stop rate, and when you stop having that feeling, that's the price. <laughs> you work with this individual, right? Okay. I, I, I had to do that myself not too long ago with the podcast because, yeah, I had, I had an individual kind of come to me and ask for, like, specific time. Like, like he has a big client list. He, wants, he wanted a client a month. When I've worked with this individual, it has been a headache, right? Uh, just, just things have happened, things have fallen apart, slipped through the cracks, and I'm like, so I had to figure out what this is actually worth, because I'm actually worth, like, wait, I'm worth something, so what is that actually worth? And then I did, then I applied the resentment meter, yeah, because I'm like, I'll do it for this much and for these under these conditions. Mm-hmm. That's the only way I'm going to do it, though, because I'm not going to go through the. Again, you have to you have to realize like for your own sanity. Yeah. And that's the other thing too. I mean, yeah, I'm you're 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 working for me, but yes, you have yeah. but you have again you have your own ideas, your own thoughts, your own ways of doing it. And also on a personal, I want you to come back. <laughs> <laughs> right? I do. I do want you to come back. So if I'm a prick to you, it's not coming back. Like you're not coming back. <laughs> You'll, like I said, you might do the volume, like, like, good luck with everything else you do. And that's now, and you'll be like, thank God. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, if, I, I imagine I could be more of a prick if, if X amount of money was involved. Probably. Probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If but, you're doing a bad job and you're spending this much money, or if yeah. I'm doing a bad job and you're spending this yeah, much yeah. money. Yeah, then I, then, yeah. Then, then I could, then I could, then I could be a bit more of a prick, but then you'll, you'll take that a little bit more because the paycheck would be a lot more too. You'd be yeah. like, this, this isn't working. It's like, why is this work. I'll try to be nice about it because I I did a whole comic book about stick figures that are revolting against their career because he can't draw them well. <laughs> really? but, but yes, that's the actual, that's, that's, that that that, 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 it's called the Stick Figure Revolution. It'll be coming out later. Oh, this. it hasn't come out yet. No. Ooh, so I did, I, 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 I did, I did, I did like a Dr. Seuss story. Really? <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, yeah, well, it, so I'll give you the evolution of that. So what happened there was about five years ago, I came up with this idea. I draw stick figures. I say I say it as a joke. I draw stick figures so bad they revolt. But that would actually be a hilarious story. So I, I talked to a buddy of mine. He actually jumped at the chance. He was he's a he's like he actually asked me to draw it. So he, uh, he we figured out how to pay him. I paid him. And he disappeared for like three years. No, no, no. seriously. He, he no, he's working. Like, I'd hear from him. I'm working on it. It's coming. It's. I mean, it's like. Then one day, like like last year, I get this giant like 24 pa- 24 painting stick figure. Really cool, right? Really cool. But 
but it's not the script I wrote either. Oh no. So, this, this, so I'm looking at this. It is a story. You can tell it's a cohesive story start to finish, right? Can I make a story work? Now, it took me about six months to get at this because it's like, so I, did, I tried the, um, do you know what the Marvel method is for comics? Uh, no. Okay, so Stanley, when he used to, used to write like 12 books a month, which, yeah, that, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> what he would do is he would, he would plot a story with his artist, whoever his artist was. His artist would draw the story and then he'd fill in the words later. So I kind of tried to do it like that. And then last year I did a uh, Dr. Seuss off with, um, I had grown writers and or other creative people reading Fox and Socks in like other voices. So, <laughs> so they, they, it was their idea. Yoda voice, you haven't lived until you heard Fox and Socks in Yoda. A Russian voice, an English voice, uh, a Jewish voice, and there was a Valley Girl off too. What? Yeah, was, I'm doing it again this year at When Words Collide, which is in August. So, yeah, so, but I mean, I, I've been saying this for the last two years. Dr. Seuss might be the greatest graphic novelist of all time. If you sit there and think about what he does, it's graphic, it's it's not a comic, but it's a graphic novel start, start to finish. And I was like, could I write so this? So, this is where I punch myself. Not only will I write this draft, I'll do it, and I'll do it in the way where it's like, I'll do it like Seuss would do, it, except for the dialogue might be a little different. It's yeah. where, where I, cheated, I cheated a little bit, but that's but it's A A B B A A B B the whole. Oh yeah, yeah, really? Really, yeah. Wow. It hurt that should my, be pretty good. Yeah, it hurt your brain a yeah. little bit. <laughs> I still got like a couple, a couple of them to go through like one more time just to just to make sure that it. it there's a couple that are a little little weak still, but I mean it, it's actually surprisingly good. Yeah. Surprisingly, Paradise Lost. What? Yeah. Well, no, it's just about a creator that shuns shuns his creation. So it actually yeah. kind it actually kind of ties together a little bit that way. Yeah. Right. It's surprisingly Paradise Lost, but it's also still really I'm really proud of it. It's such a different. And you were able to get it to work, even though yeah. the story was a little different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, 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 I tell the whole story in one in one just comic actually. It's really good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I am very excited to get it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one I'm gonna be kickstarting that one probably. I will, I'm going to say August, oh, and I'm probably yeah. straight. Yeah. <laughs> I got I got an, an awful lot on my plate right now. I bet yeah. yeah. You got two books coming because you've got the that, that got just working yeah. on, and, and then, then I got my first novel. I have my first novel coming out. Saft. I get I get I literally, I literally get the edits for that next week. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I have not, and then I have I've launched my Patreon. My podcast is still ro- ro- is still rolling. So that's. Mm-hmm. I don't, you see? <laughs> I don't get to stop for anybody at this point. It's, it, I'm in I'm in a weird place where it's now it's like trying like I won an award for my podcast. So I'm in this weird I'm in this weird place where things are growing. Mm-hmm. But I'm also kind of like I'm kind of detached from people on the same. I'm kind of oh, yeah. yeah. It's, I'm in a, I'm in that weird spot of you're growing and you need to work on this. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know. Do you get any breaks? Well, sometimes. Yeah? Sometimes. I, 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 I've learned, um, I've learned since I fixed the teeth that they give a little more time for myself. Yeah? How did that go, by the way? I saw, I saw you posted it, and it looks great. Like, yeah. Do you have any pain? Or no, no, no. Actually, so, um, the when I did it, when I did it, uh, so my worst fear, the hardest part was going to the dentist the first time. Uh, because I, it wasn't even the teeth, it was just everything I had got went through when I lost them, it kind of replayed in my head. And uh, so it was, that was hard. Um, you know, I knew I had to fix it. I had, I, there, was, there was just that I had come to that point where it's like, I need to take care of me a lot better. And um, so here, they pulled them out. And then for like two months, I, I was, it didn't hurt. Oh, it didn't hurt. <laughs> the thing, the weird thing about what people have always asked is, I've never felt pain in my teeth. Never? Never. Even when the problems were happening? Yeah, then no. Be, so, because most people don't realize what happens. Like, the teeth didn't, like, break because of, ne- they eventually neglect, but mostly they broke because I was, when I was in Arizona, I was doing stuff like going 20 miles to work by a hitchhiking, walking, stuff like that on a day in, day out basis. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I had a very, I've had a very adventurous life myself. And uh, chasing your dreams it takes you to some very interesting places. But the so teeth were the price I paid for for that time in my life. So at first, and I, I, I'm sorry to explain this to people. I survived a very big trial in my life. So okay. keeping the teeth at first was kind of like a battle scar of it just reminded me what I went through. But what I never counted on was I got used to it. 
Does, oh, that, yeah. does that make sense? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got used to it. I never counted on that. And when I went to, when I made the decision to do it at first, it was purely an intellectual one, right? Okay. right? I need to fix it. This is gonna cause problems down the road. But about a month or two later, all this like anger and emotion came out because I, it, it, because also the same token, although I did, I dealt with a lot of things during that time in my life, there were still some things I hadn't. Okay. So that stuff all came to the surface. And when I was fixing the teeth, it's kind of, it was almost like I was fixing not just the, the physical scars, but some of the internal ones too. So it's kind of therapeutic for you. Then. Yeah, very much so, yeah. And when I went to, when I went to Mexico and I fixed the teeth, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird. I get to, I, 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 I take this out every night, and but at the same token, it's like I'm I'm better. I'm I'm dealing with myself. I'm still working on things. I still got longer term goals with the teeth, which okay. which is which is fine. But for now, like I've done what I needed to do, and you know I'm I'm mostly good. I'm not sure I'm as well liked by some people as a result. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a lot more comfortable. In your, you get a lot more comfortable in your skin, and you're also it's very. It's, like one of the other things I consciously stopped doing was I stopped chasing people. Chasing people? Well, well, there's just like you know how you have people go, hey, we'll meet up, and then they'll just blow you off, oh, kind yeah, of deal, yeah. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. and they'll blow you off. I don't chase people anymore. Yeah, I, I, it's a very, it's a very good thing. And, and and so if someone's bad at contacting me, well, they they can stay bad at contacting me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go out of my way for you anymore. And it annoys some people, but I, but it also, but it's just, it's just peace of mind. If you're there, you want to be there. And that's, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I don't have a ton of friends that I hang out with because I used to be one of those people that was just bad at not not necessarily getting back to people. Like if they've messaged me, I'll message you and, and I'll contact you. But I just, I'm bad at actually meeting up. Yeah. Because I, I was homeschooled. I lived on a farm. It wasn't easy to get around places. And I, I couldn't drive, obviously, when I was younger. And so I could only get to places when my parents were happened to be going that way or when we had free time. And so it was... I've just got so used to saying, okay, sorry, I can't hang out. I can text you, though, or I can call you, and that's about it. And so I was, I had always had this distance between a lot of my friends. Um, so now, living in a city where I can walk to some of them, it's it's very different, but I still have that sort of in well, feeling you, of saying no. Well, well but, you also, but you also, I think, enjoy your privacy to some degree. Yeah. Yeah, right. And I, and I, I the impression I always, I mean, this is why we're being in a neutral place. The impression I got here with you is, you, you like you like your you like your space and there's that's not a bad thing no no I mean and you, you're content with where your life is and anyone that comes in there might fuck that up <laughs> possibly <laughs> yes and yeah, yeah well, I, mean, I think that's I'm just, I'm just this is just an outside assessment right you don't yeah. want you don't want someone in your life that's just going to be chaos yeah right that's true I had a lot of that as a, when I was younger I had some friends I'd hang out with or some relatives of mine that were having issues with people so we, we'd always have this like drama around every once in a while and so no one but in my home everyone was usually pretty relaxed like it was pretty calm yeah. my brother as a teenager was a bit hectic but besides that well yeah, yeah well like, like I said it like letting loose letting loose outside is great it's outside yeah. <laughs> right it's outside in my house I don't want that kind of chaos I want because exactly. if there if, if it's there I get I get Again, I go, I get antsy, and I don't like my house. And if I don't like my house, no one else is gonna like my house. Yeah. And that's no, like I, I understand, like I understand, like boundaries, like space. Yeah. And and that just seems like like for you, that's just the way it is. Like you have boundaries. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> that's pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah. Nothing wrong with that, right? Okay, so yeah. as, as long as long as you can let people in when you want, when you you have that ability, they're healthy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> yes. I, I worry that I, I tend to not forget about people, but I just assume everyone's okay and our, our friendship is okay even if I'm not talking to you. And then as soon as I start talking to you, I don't I'm not expecting you to be angry or mad about it because oh, I'm no. not sure why you're like if you wanted to talk to me, you talk to me and vice versa. And so like I didn't oh. I didn't it's it's kinda weird. It's almost like I'm not t- not talking to someone because I'm mad at them. And then they seem to like sometimes my friends seem to think I'm feeling like I'm explaining this hard. No, no, no. <laughs> No, no, I, I get you. It's not. No, no it's. I, I think. I, I, I maybe, maybe, maybe this. It going forward, when you when you come back from your trip, going forward, when you, if you come back here, I don't know what your plans are, right? But just tell your friends. I just like my boundary. I just like my. I just like my space. It's nothing like nothing personal. I'm open. Like, just do like. This is what I say to people. You will do what you want. My door is open. 
call whenever you'd like. Yeah. Right? That's it. And if you want to call, you will call. And if you don't, you won't. That works. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, right? And that's it. That's life. And I mean, and I wish you, and then I wish you well. Yeah. That explains it a little better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just like, just with your friends, like, if they be your friends, be like, like, that's all you guys say. They're like, look. I'm used to having my space. I'm very happy with my life. I'm not saying I'm not happy with you, right? I'm just saying like that's kind of how I am. But my door is open. Give me a shout. We'll do something. Yeah, and that's it's mostly the friends I can't see, like the ones that are um, back in Edmonton or the ones I can't see very often. I don't text them very much. I feel kind of bad about that. <laughs> it's hard. Like I, I, I moved, I moved around an awful lot when when I was a kid. Like um, I. Just to give you an example, I lived in Ontario, I lived here, I lived in Phoenix, I lived in Detroit. Wow. Yeah, I've lived in a lot of places. This is what happens, and this yeah, this is the sad, this is the, the partially a sad truth, but a good truth. People, people have their lives, and you have yours, they have theirs, and what's going to end up happening is your life, you're going to... You're going to keep doing what you're doing, and they're going to keep doing what they're doing. If you're not together, you're, and you're not keeping regular contact, you're going to eventually drift apart. But it's not, there won't be like many malice or, or hatred there. It's just they are living their lives, and you are living yours. Yeah. And that's all there is to it. And it's not a bad thing. It's, it's, it's a big part of life. Now, if you are so fortunate, if you go through your life, that you still have friends you still talk to, even if you're there, it's once in a blue moon, right? And they're, But they've been there for through thick and thin with you then you are truly lost because yeah, that's sure. that's real friendship mm-hmm. right I totally agree <laughs> yeah but that's very rare I, yeah. will, I will say that it's actually incredibly rare yeah. um, but that's that's just life like life has this tendency people do what they want to do and that's that I, that that was that's what clicked about two years ago in, in regards to that it's like people do exactly what they want to do and that's a good and bad thing most people don't reckon if they don't have a conscious idea of what you want to do that's a very bad thing because that because because then you're doing what's easy yeah right that, true. then you're doing what's easy not necessarily what you want but you're doing the easy whatever's easy for you yeah whereas if you know what you want and you're going for what you want well then you're doing then you're everything everything in your life is leading you into that direction yeah does that make sense i think it's all on yeah yes <laughs> right but it, it, it's it's our blessing and it can be our curse right mm-hmm. so if you want like if you want to make sure like your friend like your friends know that you're not angry with any of them yeah just play, just be like okay hey look this is how i am i don't hate any of you i'm just i like i like my quiet and but it doesn't mean i'm above seeing you or you seeing me just give me a shout and the doors all that's it once the doors open then the illness is on them too it's the other thing yeah <laughs> right <laughs> that's also a challenge yeah. but but again they will do what they want to do mm-hmm. and you have to accept that yeah that's a good way to look at it yeah so that has that been a lot more peaceful for you, uh, 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 well, you know, actually so this is kind of so here's what's happened <laughs> certain friends have felt, have come away Okay. Which is which is which I which is to be expected. Yeah. Um. Because again, they're not gonna follow through, and if they're not gonna follow through, you're not gonna. Follow, I mean, that's just that's just life, right? Yeah. Um. So there's that, but it's also the kind of people I'm meeting. So, met a photographer who manages a rock band. There's a cool like little rock spot there. Yeah. And I, 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 it is cool, like not too far from here. That's cool. Um, I've met, I've talked to people who, I've talked to, made the top 1.5% of the writing income in the world. I, you know, I get talked to someone like you, who's, who's, who seems to be going on every adventure imaginable, <laughs> which is awesome. Which is, which is, no, but it, it, that's awesome, right? I think it's, I think, I admire the fact that you and, and your boyfriend, Brody, right? No, my, bro, my, my, my sister's name is Brody, my boyfriend's name is Vlad. Vlad, yeah, yeah, you and Vlad are just taking on the world get together, which is actually an, an amazingly cool thing. I, um, I don't think you guys maybe realize how lucky you two are. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm just saying, I, that's like to find somebody not only willing to go on the adventures you're going on, but is actually there with you every step of the way. That is an amazing 
awesome thing. Right, right. We, we kind of have realized this, mostly because it's hard to even find friends to come with you on, on trips. It's hard to find people that yeah. are, are interested in the same things. Like, I know when you're younger, you've got kids, like, you go to clubs or you're in school and you're, you guys kind of have to be in the same area. So, like, if you're if you're all interested in violin, you take violin lessons, so you have this interest. And so when, when you're older, it's kind of hard to find people that you get along with very well and you also have the same interests and got the same, um, I'm really sure how to explain the will to do it or the interest, like the, the drive. The drive to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it, yeah, it's, it, a lot of people, again, people do what they want to do yeah. and easy, easy over our, often trumps that drive True. for a lot of people. And it, it, yeah, I think. I think the big difference, I think, for a lot of people on that one is also adversity. How much adversity yes. you, fa- you face in your life, because that, um, I think the more adversity you face, the more you're equipped to actually go on these kind of adventures, too. Sure. And yeah. I feel like the main, one of, I, I don't know, not the main reason, but I've actually met him in China. I was teaching English for a year, and he was traveling, and we just kind of... Clicked. Yeah. yeah. We, were, we had the same interests, and we've just been... We just we really like traveling, we like seeing new places, we like trying new things, and he's super adventurous and kind of got me out of my shell and realized how, how much I actually enjoy trying these new things. So that's why we're, we're constantly trying to go out and find new stuff. Well, yeah, and, and that's that's how, like, my uncle was a photographer, and him and his wife, that's all they did. They traveled the world, and they took, and he took pictures of the living as doing it. So, I mean, yeah. It's so yeah. cool. Well, yeah, it, I, like, like, you know, no, like I said, I wish I had something like that, too, because I'd, be, I'd, I'd probably be even more adventurous than I am now. But it's just, you know, that's a hard, that's truly a hard thing to find. It's a hard thing to find. It's, it's one of those, it will or it won't at some point, yeah. at some point, right? But regardless, you, you're going back to just, just that. Like, people do what they want to do. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't real. I think a lot of people can't, don't really realize this until they're, like, my age, right? Yeah. Right. And then it's like, okay. But I've been kind of doing what I've wanted to do since I was um, like a teenager. So it's kind of I've, I've never, this this doesn't change my my philosophy very much. But I find with people that don't try or seek things out, I think I think that hits them really hard later in life. It does. Well, you see a lot of people they they want to travel, they want to to be a photographer, they want to write books, but they always have this sort of like dream about it. They don't think they can actually do it. Like, they don't think that if I can put so and so and so like step one step two step three to actually get to this goal which is totally possible if you start making those steps in most some cases not all cases depending on what you're going for <laughs> well, I, well here's the thing it doesn't I don't think it matters what you're going for yeah so I have five rules show up do your shit don't quit the rest is rain get out of your fucking way yeah. <laughs> like that, right? Yeah. Rule four, the rest is rain. Life never works out according to plan. It never, ever, ever. But that's not always a bad thing. Yeah. So, for example, last year I was nominated for the Aurora. You were what? I, I was nominated for the Aurora and I won the Aurora. I never put my name in for the Aurora. Someone actually put it in, not people voted, and they all voted me to win. It's something I never asked for, right? The rest is rain. You get, it's not just bad things, not just things that don't go to plan, but but sometimes it doesn't go to plan in ways that you never anticipate. I did a, so my the first um, poetry book I did was originally going to be published by me. I hired an artist very similar to, me. not you, but someone, someone, someone like that. And when I put it together, I put the book together, I put it on Smashwords, someone bought it. She goes, this is cool, what are you going to do with it? And, 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 and I, I did similar to I just said it with you. She goes, well, I just got a, I just signed with Ingram, who's a book distributor. I, I'm starting a publishing house. I'll publish it. That literally happened. Like, yeah. <laughs> so the point is, the point, the point being, things don't, will never, don't always go to plan. But that's not always a bad thing, right? Sure. Right? So you should seek whatever you want to seek and go for whatever you want to go for. Because honestly, at the end of the day, you don't really have anything to lose. If at the end of the day, if at the end of the day, you end up with nothing which I've never seen happen, but say you did, right? It would be it would be a completely different kind of, like, you won't, you'll come out of it like a bigger, you'll know a lot more about yourself, you'll know what you can handle, you know what you can overcome, yeah. all that stuff. And I think, it, and accomplishment builds self-esteem. Yes, for sure. Right. And, and 
what what are you gaining by just staying where you are? You're comfortable, but are you you're probably not as happy as you're you're wanting to be because you want to do these other things that you're dreaming about. Yeah, you exactly. just you just don't want you just don't want to do it because you're, you're holding yourself back, like you had said. Like yes. you need to get out of your own way and and just try. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you never know. What, it may not take you exactly where you want to go, yeah. but it will It will take you somewhere, and mm-hmm. it, doors will open as a result. It's how the world works. Yeah. Right? At least how it's worked for me. Yeah. Or yeah. you'll go to some magic gathering um, competition, and you'll run into a writer, <laughs> have a nice conversation, and then, what, three years later? Well, five, I, I'd say about five years later. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah about five, five years. Start collaborating. Yes. <laughs> Well, you, again, you never know who you meet, when you meet, how you meet them, right? Exactly. So, and, and that's always important. So, I think, do you think we got a good interview here? I think so. Okay, so, I, I, I tell you to plug something that we know what we're, we're plugging, but I think, I think what we should do is, if you want people to contact you, <laughs> how would they do that? Um, that's a good question. Yes. Um, I've got, I've got, I don't know, I'm not very established in my my websites or anything so I'm not the best at getting a hold of how about your Instagram um, I'm starting to work on my Instagram it's Ken it's Ken dot C <laughs> it's hard to say I, I've changed it a lot my um, Facebook also has more of them on there my Facebook page I don't so Kenzie Carr it's not Kenzie Carr on Instagram I can change no I can't change it back I've, it's Ken Z so yeah. it's K-E-N dot I think. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. She has, check a, really, that. She has a really kick ass picture of a of drawing on there right now. <laughs> you know, I actually saw I just saw it right before I walked in. So. Oh, you mean the one I just posted? On yeah, yeah. Really, it's really cool. <laughs> that was really cool. So. Sorry about the, the lane plug. <laughs> That's all, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. And that was my conversation with Mackenzie Carr. Alice Zero will be out in May. Um, Mackenzie's currently traveling the world with her boyfriend, which is awesome. Uh, I'm really looking forward to working with her again next year when she's back. And uh, Mackenzie, if you're listening to this, you are an incredible. You're an incredible talent. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, check out her her Instagram page if you want to see other work. And honestly, guys, she's she's awesome. If you need a cover artist, she's one of the best ones you're gonna find. I promise. All right, so I'm gonna be going a little long here from here on in. This is not gonna be a typical. Um, promotion thing um outside of the fact that yes my contest for astro studio is still on the go you can put your enter your ma- your email into the mailing list if you do that i will draw a name out coming this s- monday as we go into easter weekend so i'll probably be doing another tuesday show next week because of the easter holiday that all said um yeah it's been a very incredible ride um 250 episodes uh rob sawyer if he hadn't said podcast to somebody randomly and i hadn't overheard that um i never would have thought to do it never would have occurred to me and i can honestly say this podcast has been a reward on many 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 levels um let's start with the the fun stuff here like i've I've gotten to meet so many amazing people um i'm only going to name a few guys and i'm going to be missing a lot of people um people like pay of and people like um leon kersner people like um romeo hill not too long ago that was a really fun conversation People kept coming like mike pilgrim and pippa bailey people across the world to just do their thing um incredible incredible people kate and ann ever ever would that was was really really fun too from israel um ann and claire how you I hope you guys are well um i've had a chance to talk to people like chadwick ginther who's an amazing talent um great writer people like sarah l johnson um people like jim jackson we had we had a cool conversation in a chinese cafe which i'd love to do again actually with his next book so jim if you're listening I'd love to do that again with you. Um, Randy McCharles. Um, Chris Carolyn. Uh, I owe Chris a big thank you for um, believing in me. Um, if it wasn't for people like Chris, I never would have won the Aurora. And I won the Aurora with this podcast, which I, it, it blows me away. I still, I'm looking at it right now, and some days I still don't believe I got one. I, it, it's, it's an incredible 
um, achievement. It, it really, really is. Um, but and the people I've met, I've made some great friends. Uh, people like Vanessa Cardui. Vanessa is still, in my opinion, one of the smartest, sharpest, hardworking, creative people I've ever come across. Um, I've met people like that. Craig DeLui, um, another really an awesome dude and, and great, great guy. Uh, people like Ron Bender. People like, uh, you know, Ella. Jeez. Can't remember her name. I'll tell my head her name. Ella Beaumont. There we go. I'm a little, I'm a little choked up like in this moment because I again 250 episodes, it's incredible. I, I, I get to meet people like Joe Compton. Um, I get to work on some really, with some really cool people like people that took chances on me like um, MJ and Colette. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I had such a blast doing doing that, doing Sultry Summer with you. That was a cool opportunity, and I appreciate that. Um, just the ability to. I have had to go into all these different worlds, meet so many incredible people. Um, I that is it's truly that is one of the biggest like blessings in my life. No joke, no. Um, it's incredible. I I I truly have a get understanding of just what is possible. Whether it's a sixteen-year-old pop singer who's got her first album and is touring the world fearlessly or whether it's somebody older that's overcome great hardships diseases and just going for their dreams you know um i've met so many people that have dealt with so many different struggles and they keep fighting it's amazing to me it really really is i got um three really big thank yous i'm gonna put on up here actually four i got four really big thank yous thank you number one um I'm just gonna. I can't. Say, I promise I wouldn't say her name. To special someone. Thank you. Number two, um, Susie Vidori. Um, Susie, because she she's she's quietly encouraging, but she's also inspiring. She walks the walk. She talks, and I think it's amazing to walk, see where she's going with her career. Susie's gonna go very far whatever she chooses to put her mind with and I truly believe she's going to be an amazing young adult author um, when she gets when her book sells to one of the fortunate publishing houses to publish her Andres Adam I would not have met Adam if it wasn't for this podcast and Adam is one of the nicest most sincere just good hearted dudes I've ever met and Adam's been there, and and you know what? He he's one of the few people I can go to completely and trust about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and and you know, um, thank you, Adam, very much. And lastly, but definitely not least, my sister. <laughs> um, Rachel's been involved. She's been quietly encouraging me to do stuff like this, um, help be involved in stuff like this for a long, long time. So. Um, Rachel, thank you very much. I love you very, very much. You're my sister. I'm, I'm really rooting for the next phase of your life. I'm sad I'm not going to be there as much, but I'm happy you're going for it. And to everybody that's been on my show and to everyone that's listened on my show, thank you very much. And that will do it for this episode, just joshing. So if you want to keep support the podcast, um, you can do so in a number of different ways. Um, uh, First off, you can subscribe to it. Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Podomatic. I am on all those platforms and many more. Find me, subscribe, review it, share it. I really, really appreciate that. My YouTube channel is Joshua Pentelaresco. Eat my books, The Watcher, Storm Dancer, Wandering God, or Courtesy of MirrorWorldPublishing.com. Finally, my book, Alice Zero, will be coming from Just Josh and Media, available for pre-order this may all right beyond all that guys stay inspired message yet to come keep going keep chasing your dreams i promise you good things will happen josh josh